I think it's just really about being becoming your own best friend and best lover. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. It's Eileen. In today's episode, we'll be discussing sacred sexuality, feminine embodiment, basically reconnecting with your body and feminine energy, and balancing your feminine and masculine energies through the tantric arts. Heads up, we'll be talking about sensitive topics like sex and touch on sexual trauma, so listen at your own discretion. Our guest today is Nadine Lee. Nadine Lee is the teacher of the tantric arts feminine embodiment coach and founder of Tantric Alchemy. At the core of her work is expanding you on every level to support the death of what no longer serves you in order to birth you into who you came here to be. So here is Nadine Lee. Hi Nadine, welcome to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so before we get into your story, can you tell us what are the tantric arts and what does that even mean the tantric arts it's really just i feel in my experience been practices that have really helped me connect to my body and refine my sexual energy and um, channel that sexual energy into creative energy okay Okay, so let's talk about how, what led you, like go into your background and what led you to discover all of these practices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically when I was um, 14, I had an experience where I like left my body for three days. It was like a kundalini awakening of sorts and I completely left the body and um, it wasn't, you know, induced by drugs or psychedelics or anything it was just spontaneous and that really left me like feeling quite disconnected from my body you know for basically all my teenage years and I was you know in a lot of inner turmoil for those years you know I was experiencing depression anxiety um, paranoia eating disorder all these different things were manifesting because I felt like very disconnected from yeah. my body completely. Can you go back to what, like what happened that made you leave your body for three days and what, you know, were you doing, were you practicing Kundalini yoga or like, what, what was it? No, it was completely spontaneous. I was just at a friend's house. Uh Yeah. And I just started to feel this energy rush through my body. And then I just felt like, it felt like the feeling when you start to, when you smoke marijuana and you just start to leave the body you know mm-hmm. and it can get and it's like kind of scary when you start to feel that disconnect you know um so yeah it was just spontaneous so I had no idea what was going on so I hadn't taken anything I hadn't like right didn't even really know what so out of was. nowhere yeah yeah and then for yeah. three days like what were you experiencing in those three days um yeah it was just like really scary it was like um I was at my grandma's house and I was just basically just staying at home and like pretty in stillness and like just in my bedroom basically the whole time and just really felt blank, kind of like you do feel when you're stoned, you know, like that feeling of just like nothing in your mind. And it was actually scary though. At points I'd get intense terror, like, like fear come up because it was like, I didn't know what was happening, you know, and I felt like I was literally going crazy. So um, that happened and I didn't know what had happened to me. Like, it, but eventually I started to come back, you know, into like thought forms and like back into like this reality, you know, and it was like I'd taken like psychedelics because my whole perception of reality was shifted completely. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, that kind of led to, yeah, just this feeling of disconnection and out of body feeling for, you know, a good five years. And I was, um, the way I kind of coped with it was like channeling all my energy into my mental energy. So like into schoolwork and like, you know, just, yeah, into assignments and all the, all my 
things I had to do for school just to keep my brain like active because I didn't want to still it again like what mm-hmm. happened to me so I was like I need to keep my mind active you know but at that same time I was just living in in the head completely in my mental energy and I wasn't it was scary to like still that because you know I was fearing what would happen again going into that pl- that place again so that was kind of like a really interesting experience and then when I was in my early 20s, I found yoga and meditation and tantra really quickly after. And that was what really, well, it was first the yoga and meditation and that was what really helped me feel finally like integrated again and back in, in my body and feel a sense of calm and I could still my mind but like not feel like frightened if that happened. Like I felt I could actually start to come into my body. So that's really where it all began, you know, and I've just been walking this path, you know, that was like 20 years ago, I'm 34 now, and just working with energy and all these different modalities that help, you know, integrate our life force energy. And Tantra is a really big part of that. Yoga is a really big part of that. Um, Nutrition is a really big part of that. So I studied nutrition as well and detoxing and wellness. So yeah, basically what I share now is just really what has supported me over the right. past 20 years and like just really understanding the importance of embodiment and being mm-hmm. in the body when we're working with like, you know, people want to usually turn to spirituality because of traumas or, you know, things like this. And a lot of the teachings and practices you know are all about ascension and take you like out of the body you know and like kind of just all love and light and like cut off from emotion and your sexuality and like your like just things that come with like feeling what's actually happening in your body and so um my work is more about addressing that and yeah doing like inner child work and Mm -hmm. not just bypassing you know what's actually right. happening, you know, with like mantras or like affirmations that aren't really mm-hmm. like in um, consistent with what's actually happening for you. So yeah, yeah, it's a lot of presence seeing what's true and um, so yeah. it can actually be felt and alchemized and you can feel grounded in your body. Before we go on, let's take a break to hear about today's sponsor. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Life can be overwhelming and many people are burned out without even knowing it. Symptoms include lack of motivation, feeling helpless or trapped, detachment, fatigue, and more. I've been healing from burnout for a while, learning to release pressure and high expectations on myself. If you're feeling burnt out, try talking with someone who can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. What I like about therapy is I find that having a therapist will help you tap into deeper emotions and fears, ones that you don't notice in your day-to-day. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. The Lavender Lifestyle listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash T-L-L. That's Better H E L P dot com slash T L L. I think that's so interesting because you had such an extreme experience, like extreme out of body experience. So you had to learn how to, you know, work and come back to your body. And it is true in spirituality, a lot of people like they focus on meditation. So you can like leave. <laughs> like you, you know what I mean? It's not about your body as much, but like what would you I guess what is your perspective on how we use our bodies and how we can I I guess, get closer to our bodies. Yeah. I mean, there's so many ways, but I feel, you know, just simple things like looking after your physical body, you know, eating proper foods, super simple, like, um, eating, drinking clean water, not having sugar. Um, and yeah, exercising, but like as a form of just things that you enjoy doing, not like punishing yourself, you know, like trying to achieve some ideal um, body type. It's like more focusing on how you feel in your body, you know, and that can look different for everyone because you can have like a six pack and like this chiseled like 
muscles, but you feel really like just overworked and like, you know, you just, you feel stressed. Whereas if you just come to like a place of just feeling good in your body, it might look like, yeah, not a six pack. <laughs> right, I'm not right, promo- right. I'm not promoting like obesity or anything like this. Like I don't think that's healthy, but you know, we all have a natural equilibrium where our body is like at its like most healthy and that differs for everyone. You know, there's no mm-hmm. ideal body type, you know? Yeah. I mean, when you talk about that, I, I think I remember seeing that you had, you, like you, your relationship with your body has been a journey, right? Did you deal with eating disorders? Like at yeah. a certain point in your life? Like, can you talk really quick about because we're talking about the body here, a lot of people do have like shame, right? Around their body. So what is your perspective on like healing or clearing that shame that we might have around our body? Yeah. So what, what was really evident for me was, so I started, yeah, with eating disorders. And when I really went into the root cause of like, what was underneath that, you know, because every kind of physical disorder or physical ailment we have there's always something deeper like an emotional root or like a psychological root and for me it was um it was shame around sexual trauma and um I really found a correlation between that with myself and also a lot of the women I was working with like there was body image stuff but like Mm -hmm. when we when I asked them about their sexuality it was like there was a lot of shame or guilt or like there'd been sexual abuse so I feel like that's really what what we have to address and that's what really, because when we clear shame, sexual shame, that clears body shame because it's very Mm. intertwined. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's what really, I started working with nutrition and, you know, coaching women in body image stuff because that's what I was going through at the time. But then it quickly shifted into, yeah, just going to the root, which was like, sexuality, healing your sexuality, reconnecting to your body, clearing out any stuck traumas that might have happened, um, unlocking like your pleasure and that erotic mm-hmm. energy, you know, releasing the shame. Yeah. Um, how would you explain sacred sexuality? Like what is that? Um, I just feel like it's it's really what sexuality is it's sacred (laughs) Mm -hmm. so it's just basically sexuality in its true form you know um because on this on the planet you know it's been so distorted sexuality with the porn industry and just the exploitation of sexuality and all the advertisements and the suppression of sexuality in like certain religions so it's like so confusing and distorted our what the institutions are trying to teach us around sexuality. So when we can really reclaim and see it as it being this most powerful energy that we can access, which literally creates life, and that when we open ourselves sexually to someone else, that it's such a powerful act and that we're really merging like DNA and energetics and karma, karmic imprints, you know, Mm -hmm. you really start to view it from like a different perspective. It's not just like using one another to get off, you know, which is what a lot of people are doing. It's like, oh, I feel horny. I'm just going to go and fuck someone. And it's like how, like such a waste and such a um, abuse of this sacred energy, you know? So I think when people Can you go in... Oh, God. <laughs> I was going to ask, can you go into what makes that union so special? Like what is happening from your perspective? Because I think a lot of people do see it as just a physical thing. So what is the spiritual perspective? Yeah, so we are opening our auric fields to merge with another person. And we are taking on a lot of their energetic imprints and they're even sometimes they're karmas and they're like subconscious especially for women because we penetrate we absorb more so we absorb like if you look at a man that you're with like do you want to is he clear you know is he or is he kind of like got a lot of 
demons he's battling with at the moment, you know, he's kind of like going through some really intense stuff. Like if you're going to have sex with someone like that, you're going to take on a lot of that stuff. So, Mm -hmm. you know, there's this, this kind of thing. It's like you, you don't want to have sex with someone who you don't admire or like you are inspired by, you know, just because they're hot or like, you know, your lust takes over and this is such a distortion. So, um, it is such a spiritual thing in that terms, in that, in that perspective. And also, yeah, because it is such a powerful force that creates life. So think about that, you know, like (laughs) it's, it's really, really powerful. So when you're just using it, like, and using one another, like it's really, um, yeah, exploiting that like powerful creation force, you know, that, yeah, it's just not worth it. <laughs> just to yeah. have sex with anyone. So you say it's is technically better to just not have sex with the wrong people and just you and yourself, right? So, like self pleasure. Is that your perspective? Yeah, for sure. And I feel yeah. like you know, like like for me, you know, I don't need to be in relationship to have sex with someone. But like, I don't have when I'm single. I don't. It's not like it's usually like the last time I was single, there was it was like a year and a half of being single. And there was only like two people that I engaged with, like I actually had sex with. And it was more, I wasn't like being strict on myself. Like I'm not allowed to have sex with anyone, but like those two people, it was like, there was a friendship base there. And like, it was in a, there was a deep, like mutual respect and there was um, honoring, you know, and it was kind of like, we both knew that it wasn't going to be a relationship. It was more just, like an experience and an exchange of love. So I think that's the difference. Like there has to be love in, in the equation, you know, because if it's just the root, it's, it is, it's like using one another and um, it's just like, it's fulfilling, trying to find, fulfill a, a need inside or like something lacking inside by using someone else when that right. needs to be addressed, you know, like why is right. it that we need to go out and just do that, you know? Right. It's like there's something deeper, like how can you love yourself more, or like, you know, mm-hmm. honor yourself and like pleasure yourself and, um, yeah, so. Yeah. I mean, what are the main main lessons or the main things that you try to teach when you're working with women who, who, you know, maybe need to improve their self-love and and their relationship with themselves? Because the truth is a lot of people do have that void and they try to fill it in, you know, by finding someone else. Right. So what is your take on that? Yeah. I think it's just really about being, becoming your own best friend and best lover, you know, because, we can keep like just masking it over with getting a new partner over and over again, but the same things would just keep coming up, you know, the same patterns and the, it has to, you have to be in a place I feel where, yeah, you can be completely like okay and happy and content in your own company. (laughs) And I think that's like a deep sense of self-love and it's, um, and I feel self-love, you know, is not just about, like pampering yourself and like getting massage like that's part of it but it's really about loving like all the parts of ourself that we feel are not lovable so you know that's basically shadow work you know like looking at what do I feel if I brought this to a partner that they might reject me for you know those little things Mm -hmm. that we feel are unlovable those characteristics or traits and it's really learning to love those parts of ourself more than anything. Right. Right. Um, I do want to explore with you because I, I want to ask you about your thoughts on how, you know, government, religion, media try to control sex and, and why you think it happens. Like, I don't know. I kind of want to dig into that because people see when they think of sex, they think like there's a certain connotation, right? So why do you think the mainstream does that? Yeah, there's many layers to it, but I feel it's really to confuse us because, you know, it's like when we're in a state of confusion, especially around our sexuality, 
then we're more easily to be kind of manipulated, you know, so then we can be good citizens and like just do what the government says and like not really expand into like our greatness, you know, it's like there's this kind of shackle over our life force energy, our sexuality. So I feel there's like many <laughs> layers to that because it's like so many you know, layers. Like, like for example, yeah. like like people, like celebrities are overly sexualized. Women are overly, overly sexualized. And yet like women are called sluts or there's like shaming around being too sexy sometimes. So there's like both happening. And I, I mean, I think it's about like control, right? Control. I don't know. Like, yeah. What are your thoughts? Yeah, for sure. It's like, yeah. Damned if you do, damned if you don't, like if you don't, if you're not sexy, you're like a prude. If you're too sexy, you're a slut. <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. it's just, yeah, also part of that patriarchal control over feminine energy and um, mm-hmm. that being a way to really, yeah, like suppress humanity because when women are awakened to their sexuality, then it really creates a new earth and women will have, you know, be birthing orgasmically and like that will create, you know, children that are, you um, you know, less trauma coming through. Mm. So it really starts with women. And I feel, um, you know, being a sexually liberated woman, I feel doesn't, in my opinion, like it doesn't necessarily mean like sleeping around and like posting nudes and like, you know, wearing skimpy clothes. It's really about just knowing the power of your sexuality and knowing how to wield it and how to channel it and circulate it. And, um, how to create with it, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, it, and, and feel sovereign in it. So it's like you choose who that gets shared with, you're not doing it to gain validation or love from the outside. So I feel this is what I feel is like sexually liberated. <laughs> like recognizing that it is your power instead of something you should be ashamed about. I mean, yeah. I, I'm curious to like, can you go into more about what it looks like to be in your power. Like, what do you mean create with your sexuality, right? Like I hear these terms being thrown around, but what, what do you actually mean? Yeah. Well, so basically like your, your sexual energy, it creates life, you know, and we create that in our womb space, obviously with the man as well. So it's like each month, you know, you're not obviously creating a baby, it's just not even possible to be impregnated every single month when we release an egg. So it's like, how do we channel that energy into what we want to create in our life? You know? So, um, yeah. And that's where the, the tantric arts come in, you know, especially the practices of the jade egg. That's a really powerful one, learning how to Mm -hmm. circulate your sexual energy. And, um, yeah. Can you go into that? The egg? Yeah. So yeah, what is so, it and what does it help you do? Yeah, so it's basically a, like an egg that's um, made out of nephrite jade and it is a stone that is said to be balanced in, it's like perfectly balanced in yin and yang, masculine, feminine energies. So when you use it, you use it internally. Um, it comes from the Taoist tradition, the Taoist tantric tradition, And you use it internally inside your vagina and you do different practices, different breathing practices, different um, movement practices. And what it's doing is um, toning your pelvic floor. And when your pelvic floor is toned, that's when your life force, this sexual energy, you know, same thing, it starts to, instead of leak out energetically, it starts to like create a seal at your pelvic floor, like a vacuum seal. And it starts to push that energy up. And so it can start to circulate throughout your body. And that's where you get more energy, more creative energy, you know, and more vibrancy. And um, so there's that. And, you know, it also helps with releasing because you're using the egg internally like massaging in inside the yoni like the vagina Mm -hmm. canal so it's like yeah helps release any stuck emotions any stuck trauma if someone's experienced that and it's a really powerful practice to bring you fully into your body because it's like right you're really like 
breathing and focusing all your attention attention on your yoni. So yeah. it's really, really powerful for that. And how is this something that you practice consistently? Like how long do you have it in there for? Is it all day? Is it like, I don't know how, give us more details. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, usually it's like, I just practice it once a week or once every two weeks. Mm-hmm. And it's like a, kind of like a yoga, a yoga session, you know, you, it's an mm-hmm. intentional space and, um, you only really use it for up to an hour at a time because okay because it's like a weight and it's like working the muscles. If you leave it in for too long, then it can be like you're working the muscles on overdrive and it'll like tire yeah. your muscles. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Cause it, when you learn about like the chakras, like your sexuality is your root chakra and it's actually the base of like everything else. So it makes sense that you say it gives you more vitality and creative energy because that's that's really where the creative energy is coming from, which is so interesting. Yeah, yep, for sure. Okay, um, let's talk about the role because you mentioned earlier the role of like trauma and sexuality, like healing sexual traumas or just any traumas. Like, what is your? Do you have like a process or a way that you work with women? Um, yeah, I mean, to be honest, I don't really do much deep trauma work so much anymore. Like I I touch upon it a bit, but I'm really um, more interested in working with women who have done a lot of trauma work already and and they're they're ready to kind of like create, you know. And Uh, so I've shifted that a bit. But generally I always start with some sort of, you know, light trauma work, like looking at, you know, your inner child patterns and, creating a space where you can, you know, feel whatever is like the theme that's running in your life at the moment, like something that might be triggering you or like upsetting you. And we can look at like when was the first time that belief was formed, you know, as a child and, you know, just say like you, your boyfriend broke up with you and you feel like the, this abandonment feeling is coming up and of the masculine And so, you know, it takes someone through like um, a process going back to the first time they ever felt that maybe it was when they were five years old and their dad like left the family, you know, and so maybe they didn't get to process that emotion as a five-year-old. So whenever a man does it now, it like triggers them back into a childlike state and, you know, it's it's really, really traumatising, you know, because it wasn't able to be felt as a child because it is hard to feel a lot of those things as a child, you know. So that's a lot of the work I do now. So I give create a space for women to, yeah, go back into that original time that they felt something and just to express whatever needed to be expressed, you know, if they need to cry, if they need to, like, beat a pillow, if they need to, like, say some loving words to themselves or, like, hold themselves, like, whatever it is um, to repair and, and just retrieve that part of themselves that might be fragmented from the childhood that incident Mm -hmm. so right and you mentioned that you now focus more on like after people have healed from some level of trauma so what I guess what do you do now how do you work with women now yeah I mean I would still always touch upon because you know there's always stuff Mm -hmm. that comes up but that process you shared that would be like you know, we'd always start with something like that. Like in all my containers, I like to work with like a purification aspect, activation of the sexual energy once we've like cleared out some of the kinks, you know, and then circulating. So what do we want to create with that, with that energy, you know? So those three phases are how I take my clients through the, my mentorship program, the one-on-one program, and then it's always kind of weaved like that throughout my um, group programs as well, depending on whatever the topic is. But um, yeah. What is usually the ideal end result? Is it is it more just about like how a woman feels about herself or like you mentioned earlier, like, oh, is there something she wants to create specifically out of this? Like, get, you know, what are some examples? Yeah, it's just, it's different, you know, like, 
some women, there's two types of women that I work with. It's like women who are really connected to their feminine energy and they're wanting to balance out with their masculine and start to channel that creative energy into their business. So I help them like, you know, work with healing their masculine side, the father wounds, and then like how to actually like with tantric practices channel all that shakti or that feminine energy into create a, an actual creation. And then there's another side, the women that are um, more in their masculine and then they want to embody more of their feminine. So that's where, you know, they're like business women and like high executive women, but really just struggle with like pleasure and being in their feminine when it comes to dating. They just still feel like they have to be a CEO with a partner and um, can't let go and like surrender into yeah, orgasm. Yeah. So I help them with like, yeah, just why that is, you know, like letting the guard down and um, coming into, yeah, more attunement with, with their pleasure body and slowing down and looking at usually like why can't they slow down, you know, because it's usually like an avoidance tactic. It's like, staying in that hyper-masculine to avoid feeling. So, you know, there's outcomes of both, like women feeling more orgasmic, having better relationships and sex, and then the other side is like women who are like stepping into their full power and their like business and like what they want to create. So, yeah, that is so interesting. So you're, I mean, it makes sense. You're just helping people find their balance between masculine and feminine. And you're saying both, types of women you use like some sort of like sexuality tantric practices to help them get there to that balance yeah yeah I mean that's always usually weaved in yeah um earlier you also mentioned like orgasmic births which I've heard about I've heard about women like orgasming during birth and you mentioned something about how that's better for the baby can you go into that yeah well you know like what yeah, how, what, what is the spiritual aspect of what that means, like an orgasmic birth? Um, how rare is it? And then what does that mean for the baby? Yeah, well, I think this is a really big thing, you know, that as we realize the sacredness of the sexuality and more like conscious relationships in general, then it's like um, we can consciously conceive, you know, like cause a lot of times you know, people just accidentally fall pregnant. It's not a conscious choice. It's just like, oh, whoops, you know, like, so if we can consciously do that, like really call in the spirit and like be mentally, emotionally, physically prepared as the mother and father, this is, this is really important, you know, if we're going to bring in a child um, to this planet. And then like if a couple's in that space, you know, of making sacred love like really beautiful love making that is going to be like you know a child conceived of pure love you know and pure orgasmic Mm -hmm. it's not from a need like oh we need to have a baby to save our relationship or you know like all these distorted things that happen Mm -hmm. um so when the baby's conceived it's from like pure love and like orgasmic bliss you know and then I feel like I've, I know a few people have had orgasmic births, but like just the way that we enter this world, you know, like how we can, how we're conceived first and then how we are birthed, I feel really like sets up, sets us up like for our life, you know, it's how we enter and then how we exit. So, Mm. um, so if our mother is really in touch with her, body and she knows how to breathe and like she's relaxed and you know like can just really surrender into that process not take drugs or um have like forceps and all these sort of interventions you know it it allows the baby to come out with like I feel more um just like less trauma you know birth trauma that's a thing is birth trauma you know there's a lot of people go back into like rebirthing ceremonies and breath work to heal their birth trauma. You know, some wow. people had really horrific tra- births and it's like, it's like how we enter, it kind of 
like if you entered in like a traumatic way, then it can create like a belief, I feel, that this place is not safe, you know, or you don't feel safe, you know. So if you enter in like, you know, in a birthing pool and like the father's there and like the mother feels supported mm-hmm. and she's not like with lights on her and she's like mm-hmm. feeling stressed out because everyone's trying to inject stuff in her, mm-hmm. like that would just, it just really, yeah. um, when she, when a baby's born in more a loving way, a natural way, like, yeah, it, it, you can just imagine how <laughs> that yeah, would Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because yeah. the baby feels the energy and it's going through that experience with that entire environment. That's just interesting because I don't think I've ever heard of that term of like birth trauma, of like babies having trauma because of the way they were birthed. Um, yeah, and I mean, even even the whole system of like um, circumcision, like that, is, mm-hmm. that in itself is just crazy. Like That to, must be traumatic <laughs> for yeah. all these baby boys, yeah. Yeah, and that's wow. just... And even the umbilical cord being cut so quick is actually oh. not natural because um, that's your connection to the mother, you know, and it's meant yeah. to like slowly fade off, like not just like cut straight away as soon as you get out, you know, so that severs the connection to the mother like very quickly. And a, a lot of the time, you know, they'll take the baby and they won't even let them be on the mother. They'll just pull it straight into a capsule and that in itself yeah. like, it wants to be close to the mother because that's like, you know, it's just entered this like full on foreign place. It's like, <laughs> I'm going to capsule. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's so interesting when you think about it. It, it like, it just shows how disconnected we are from our bodies and what, and what is like natural. And yeah, it's on my mind. Cause I do have like three friends who are pregnant right now and it's, yeah, it's so interesting. Yeah. And it really starts, like, I feel a lot of this work that, you know, I teach and what I've been doing with the jade egg and like healing the womb and connecting to the womb space and consciously menstruating, all these things are really like preparing, you know, for that birthing process. Mm -hmm. I feel like, because so many women that come, they get pregnant, like within a year of doing something with me. And it's been like kind of the catalyst and like, opening of that creative that womb channel you know the creative yeah. channel yeah um you also mentioned conscious menstruation what is that <laughs> yeah yeah so again it's like you know instead of just unconsciously menstruating which is like just as soon as you're letting it happen yeah, yeah just letting it happen just put a tampon and keep going on with your day like not even really acknowledging what's going on in your body So that's like unconscious menstruation. Consciously menstruating is like, yeah, really just um, having a strong connection with the phases of the cycle, you know, so the bleeding phase, the first week really being all about taking that time just to reflect and self-care and rest and be with yourself, especially the first two days. You know, you don't need to take a week off, but just the first two days, and reconnecting with your menstrual blood, you know. So a lot of women, if they're feeling disconnected from their feminine, um, the first thing I always suggest is, yeah, just getting a menstrual cup or some period panties and, like, connecting with your menstrual blood because that's, like, literally the elixir of your femininity. It's like, you know, it's the same as semen. So the male's seed elixir is semen. And then women's is the menstrual blood because it comes from the the womb, you know. The uterus, yeah. Yeah, so connecting to that. And it just means like just because if if you're just putting in a tampon or a pad, you don't get to like see how much is coming out and like the texture of it and the energy of it, you know. So if you're using a cup or, you know, those period panties, like you can – like squeeze out the blood from panties or with a cup it's easier you can actually see and just connecting with it seeing what what what's going on with your blood you know and then I like to just like um offer it back to the earth you know and just nothing fancy. really just, okay yeah. yeah just give it to the earth and that being like a symbol of um also like connecting your womb to the earth 
So you're like plugging into like energetically to the, the earth. So you're feeling very grounded and feeling connected to this feminine energy of the earth. So it's such a beautiful, you know, way to consciously menstruate just to really re- yeah. remember our feminine essence, that creator energy. Yeah. Wow. I just feel like most women would not like that. That concept is so abstract <laughs> for, for most women to, to connect with their menstruation, but, but it's, it's so interesting. I mean, like, I guess how, how do you spiritually connect with it? Just, just like interacting with it is enough. Yeah. There's just something like it's, I mean, it's pretty in, intuitive, you know, but mm-hmm. it's just really, just by seeing it, you know, is such a healing thing in itself, you know, because there is such shame around it, like this subtle unconscious shame that like society puts on us, you know. So that's signaling to your body to shame your feminine side of you. So if we can reclaim that and it's like, this isn't dirty, this is just like, you know, a natural thing that happens every month. And um, just by witnessing it and I like to you know, if you're using a menstrual cup, you can see like, you know, obviously the color of it and like Mm -hmm. the, if there's any clots or anything like this, and that can tell you a lot about like what's going on in, in, inside of you, you know? So it's a really good way to like understand your body more, understand what's happening every, every month. Right. Amazing. Okay. Um, lastly, I, I do want to talk about I mean, the relationship between self-pleasure and pleasure with partner, because do you think we need both? And what is your, like, what is balance in terms of a person's sexuality? What does that look like? Um, Yeah, I feel like, you know, just because you get in partnership doesn't mean you just have to stop um, your own self-pleasure practice. Because it's kind of like self love you know it's a form of making love to yourself so it's like you know just say you get into a partnership that doesn't mean that then you stop loving yourself you you know just say oh okay now it's your turn you can just like love me I don't need to do anything for myself anymore. <laughs> you know it's the right. same kind of thing so I feel you know when I'm in relationship the self-pleasure is less just because like I'm you know having intimacy with another person a lot more frequently so I don't it really feel like the, the desire to do it like a lot, but when I'm single, definitely. But I, when I'm in partnership, still definitely like prioritizing that. Like if I just mm-hmm. do the jade egg practice, you know, once a week or like just one self-pleasure session a week, but that usually feels really balanced to me. But everyone's yeah. different, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think something I realized is that I think when people are in relationships, they feel like, it should just be with the partner and you forget to do it like on your own. But I realized that, that it is a, it is a form of self love and you have to give back to yourself before you can like give to others too. Right. So it's remembering to give back that energy to yourself instead of always giving it away. Cause yeah, it is like a dance between two people, but it, you know, it just depends. Like if you depends on your energy. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, What advice would you leave with listeners today for women who feel, you know, disconnected with their body and who, you know, for, for women who, you know, all of these topics are, are very new. Like, what is your advice? Where, where can they start if they want to, you know, get into it more? Yeah. I mean, there's, this conscious menstruation is definitely a first start. So tracking Mm -hmm. your cycle, you know, you can download an app, so many apps now. Um, Mm -hmm. I've got. What's your favorite one? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I use Clue. Yeah. Yeah. I used to use period diary and that's a really good way to start. It's like, just so you know, when you're, when your bleed is due, when you're ovulating, you know, just that's a good first start. (laughs) to get in touch with your menstrual cycle and then yeah I'll get a menstrual cup or some period panties I love the thinks is the brand I love their period panties um and yeah just starting to yeah ditch the tampons and those plastic pads and start to yeah it also helps the environment or 
saving all, all of that plastic that's used in those pads and tampons. And they're really toxic as well. Tampons are really toxic. So that would be the first start. And then I would, yeah, really just start with a self-pleasure practice and potentially the JDEC practice. And, you know, I have a course that's all, that guides you through both like self-pleasure practices and the JDEG. It's called Pleasure Principles and it's a self-paced course. So you just do it your own, in your own space, you know. So, yeah, I would suggest those two for sure to start to really connect to your sexuality, to your body. And, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, question that popped up. What is What are your thoughts on, like, birth control because some women who are on birth control either have a small period or don't really have a period and they're just like disconnected from their cycle completely yeah yeah I'm really um not I'm not for birth control at all like I don't believe it's good for us at all it's really messing with a lot of women's hormones and um if you can get off it it's best to get off it. And, you know, once you can, once you start tracking your cycle, then you know when you're ovulating. So if you're on it for like fertility reasons, like to try and not get pregnant, like when you're um, tracking your cycle, you'll know when you're ovulating that window where it's like high risk. So, you know, maybe you use a condom if you're having regular sex with your partner, like during that time, you know, and you know when the safe zones are where you don't need to worry about um, condoms or anything like that and it also comes to the men as well like men need to learn how to <laughs> you know hold their ejaculation which is a tantric practice for men it's like <laughs> it's not just the women have to you know pump ourselves full of hormones men need to learn how to like circulate their sexual energy so you know maybe asking your partner like have you ever heard of tantra or like semen retention you know there's some good books for men it's like um it's the like it's the mantak chia books sexual alchemy or something for or for men so you can just like suggest your guy read this interesting book you know because it gives them practical things to do so that's very interesting because i i think i heard you're working with men as well so how is that different? Like, what do you work with men on? I don't really work with men one-on-one, but I do have a course okay. called Sexual Alchemy. And um, yeah. it's teaching them, like, the basics of healing their relationship with the feminine and then how to how to work with, yeah, channeling their sexual energy. So I teach the basics of semen retention in that. So that's an online course, though, so I don't interact mm-hmm. with them they just do it at their own I see yeah <laughs> I see I see um because I, I imagine there's just as much work to be done on the male side even though I feel like this topic is I only see women talking about it <laughs> I only see women talking about like feeling empowered in their sexuality and I don't see any maybe if I'm not the audience obviously but are, are there like what do you feel about that space do you feel like it's being recognized like that there's so much for men or males to to learn and grow in this area. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think it's a touchy one, you know, because a lot of men don't want to admit that they have, like, problems with, like, just say they can't get an erection or they premature ejaculate. So it's like they so much of, like, the male ego is wrapped up in, like, their sexual performance, so it's often embarrassing for them to, like, seek out another male a lot of the times to teach them and like so there is it's a hard one for them because a lot of them need help but it's like they're too scared to get it so that's why you know that's why I created that online program where they're like anonymous you know they don't need to um, yeah but there are a lot of men's you know a lot of men's work going on now but I don't know if they talk about like this sort of stuff they probably do they would but yeah okay <laughs> yeah just wondering if like the work is being d- balanced and done <laughs> you know for for all genders yeah. okay so so what is next for you I guess do you have anything exciting that you're looking forward to or 
yeah, how do you, I don't know, how do you want to continue to grow this mission? Yeah, so I'm currently writing my book. So that'll be hopefully published by the end of this year. Mm. And yeah, I want to just like have that as like a culmination of everything that I've been teaching, you know, over the past decade and create some um, like, uh, like book launch experiences out of that, you know, so tour mm-hmm. with that. And then um, I have the, a training coming up actually in December in Costa Rica that's going to be an in-person training, which is a week for women, and it's called the Embodied Feminine Leadership Training. So that's a really powerful way to just like really immerse in these practices and in-person is really where it's at, you know, because it's yeah. there's only so much you can do on Zoom with this sort of work, like mm-hmm. when it's embodiment. So. I really yeah. love doing that, that training. Yeah. yeah. And and do you have a title for your book or like a quick summary on what it what it's about? Yeah, it's actually called The Sex Priestess Codes. So it's a course that I was running, you know, the past year and a half I've been running this online course and it it's like six codes. In the book it's going to be seven and it's like seven chapters and it's different aspects of really yeah coming into your into your full power as a woman and really that journey from like the head into the body and sharing my experiences sharing teachings and sharing like um uh, practices you can do and journal prompts throughout the book so it's like going to be a interactive experience (laughs) amazing awesome well Thank you so much. Oh, lastly, where can we find you online? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram. It's at tantric.alchemy underscore. And then my website is tantricalchemy.net. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just want to point out, I, I do love your Instagram posts, like your captions and just to see the kind of work that you do. It's so fascinating. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Everyone, make sure you check out Nadine Lee. I'll put all her links in the show notes down below. Thank you so much.